All right, guys, we're back again. This is more a video for the pros out there that do plumbing or handymans that uh, do plumbing. And uh, just so want to know in the comments below what you guys think. So today I got a call from a homeowner saying their spout is uh, not working correctly and the lever is just on the stuck position. So we decided to go try to change the spout and the copper was just turning on us and it wasn't coming out. So we gave the option to the customer um, to replace the diverter or just the copper that was spinning and the customer decided, you know what, it's an old mowing, it's not working correctly anyhow, let's just replace everything. So we went in our truck, check, make sure we had a, a spout and all the trim pieces we need and a diverter. And it happens to be that we got a fully stocked truck, so we told the customer, no problem, we could just do it right now. So we started cutting everything out. And uh, usually in this uh, cases, we need to do a rental plate so we could get in there and replace that uh, diverter. But I always try to do it without cutting tile so we don't have to use that rental plate. In this case, I was lucky enough that I had a decent amount of room to work in there and uh, get it working without that rental plate. Um, so we start cutting out the old mowing cartridge. I'm sorry, the old mowing diverter uh, so we could get the, the new Delta diverter inside there. I used the multi-tool uh, to cut the copper hot and cold. And then I removed the uh, copper coming out for the spout. Then, as you guys know it, I pulled the torch out and I unswept that diverter. The biggest uh, problem I had here is that wall was full of insulation. So as you guys know, the torch and insulation do not mix. So I had to move all of that insulation out of the way so I could work. And um, it was pretty tight in there. As you guys know, that cavity is probably only about three and a half inches between the stud and the exterior wall or whatever wall you have on the other side. So it's not a lot of room in there. And then to throw another curveball, the hot and cold um, were bent. So the hot and cold, they bent it um, instead of putting 90s. So it was like more of a sweep. So I didn't have a lot of meat uh, to cut. And boom, I did a rookie mistake. I forgot to take the handheld out. And by me moving everything, it just landed on my head. So guys, take the shower heads uh, handheld off the hook. Because if you, keep, if you move it, it will fall on your head. And that plastic Home Depot shower head does hurt. And uh, after I got that little mini concussion, I started moving on. I had to move on because we need to turn the water back on to the homeowner. So anyhow, I got the handheld out of the way and I keep on cleaning. Another thing is the hardest part uh, on these jobs is trying to get the spout copper inside that wall. So that's the first thing I always do. I cut two pieces, one for the piece coming down and one for the stub out of the spout. Once I solder it up, uh, cool it down, I try to slide it in there. I cut, I cut it long in the beginning, and then I start cutting little by little enough so it stubs out. Because you don't want that piece too short, because if not, you're not going to be able to install the Delta adapter for the spout. So in this case, you'll notice at the end that I barely made it to catch the adapter for the spout. Um, there's only possible way to install the spout is putting that adapter on there i do like uh, the delta spouts with that adapter i find them a lot better than uh those cheap ones that you have to solder mail and screw it on or use that set screw on the bottom i just like the delta spouts a lot better so anyhow once you get that diverter inside that wall i uh took out the spout uh copper l uh the stub out and i try to fit it in there it's real tight, but I got it in there. And then a big key important part is you got to make sure that stub out coming out of the wall for the spout is dead level. Because if it's not level, you're going to go screw that spout in and you're going to have a gap on top, on the bottom, or it's going to be crooked. And that's going to look like crap. So if you see here, I got a little handy dandy screwdriver, a cleaner brush. I got a wedged in there to hold it level while I solder. And again, I'm keeping an eye for that insulation. Make sure nothing turns on fire, turns cherry red. Because if that happens, I got big problems and you got to pull that fire extinguisher out. Thank God I didn't have to do that. But 
Let me know, guys, the pro press lovers. What do you guys do here? If you have to replace this diverter and you don't you don't solder, how do you guys replace it with uh, a pro press? The pro press is definitely not gonna fit in that little hole. And uh, will you guys just cut the tile, get a tile guy to retile, or is the rental plate enough for you guys to pro press all your fittings? In this case, I don't think it will be enough because um, when you're gonna go pro press, since it was sweeps you had to uh, cut the sweep out to be able to put a coupling or a 90. And I find that almost impossible. As you can see here, it's nice and tight. Everything's uh, nice and clean, soldered, and we're ready to go. So meanwhile, I let it cool down. Once it's cool, I can start putting the stops on. Another uh, trick, I don't know if you guys knew, the Milwaukee 10-in-1 uh, or 12-in-1, whatever they are, they have a size especially... Um, fit for the delta stops which i believe they're like three eights i believe something like that but they work phenomenal to tying up the the stops on the diverter that's what i use so before putting all the trim and everything i turn the water on and i want to make sure everything's tested nothing's leaking inside the wall because once you put that plate on you don't want no leaks behind there because if not the homeowner's going to call you in a couple of days saying their ceiling's going to come down because there's a leak inside the wall so once everything's tested, you shower head, your spout, make sure everything's pressurized. You clean that wall nice and clean, and I put the plate back in there. Guys, yes, I could have used the longer screwdriver, but that's the only one I had on my tool bag for now, and that's the one I like using. I call it the Navian because that's what I use for Navian. Let me know in the comments below how do you think this came out. If you've done anything different, this is for you pros out there. I want uh, your comments to uh, enlighten me and see if I can learn something new from you guys. If you need any plumbing work, residential or commercial in the North Jersey area, let us know. We'll take care. See you on the next one. See ya.